Welcome back to Done With Depression. It's day two. And today I think I'm just gonna continue to do some more reading. I'm reading two books right now. So I'm reading um, Self Matters by Dr. Phil. It took me a little while to get past that it was by Dr. Phil, but once I got past that, it was all good. Um, I read like the first couple pages and it seemed like exactly what happened in my life. Uh, so I'm reading that book. And then, as you guys know, I'm also reading The Four Agreements. And if you've seen the other videos, you know what that's about. But I think we're on Agreement 3 right now, possibly. So we'll probably go into that later as well. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of the activities that are in the Self Matters book. So here there's some questions and you're trying to figure out your authentic self. So you mark like one through four on each question and there's more. And then of course you get a score at the end. And then based on what your score is, you can see what percentile you end up in based on the maximum amount of points and then that will give you how close you're living to your authentic self. There's also another one where it has a list of values and you circle one list for what your ideal values would be and you circle the same list of your current state, the values that you're living in right now and that gives you a actual self score. And then you can find out what percentage of your life essentially you're living to your ideal values. And then based on that, again, you can see what percentage you are and then ideally you wanna get higher in the percentage of living to your ideal values instead of um, just living with like 50% of your ideal values. So I'm about a third of the way through the book. I'm about 100 pages in. And so far it's pretty good. I like some of the activities that it has you work on. And it's just starting to get into looking into your past and things like that. Uh, it does have a lot of similarities with the Four Agreements book that I'm reading as far as agreements that we agree to and how there's all of these agreements in our head that we don't even necessarily recognize that are kind of our rules for the way that we live our life. So I'm gonna keep reading Self Matters, but let's jump back into the next agreement on the Four Agreements book. So Four Agreements, the third agreement is don't make assumptions. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. In this chapter, it talks about making assumptions and the main way to get around making assumptions is to ask questions. Uh, it says we make assumptions about everything we believe the assumptions are true and then we react, react emotionally to the assumptions. All sadness and drama is rooted in taking things personally and assuming. So it takes um, this rule and the last rule of taking things personally and making assumptions. Um, gossip made from assumptions transfers poison to one another and it's the dream of hell. So one person will start gossip based on an assumption. They'll pass the gossip around, they're spreading poison, but it's even worse because it's an assumption. 
and it's gossip. It's always better to ask questions than to assume. Assumptions set us up for suffering. Uh, when we don't understand something, we try and make an assumption about why it's happening. And that's something that really happens in our brain. If our brain doesn't understand something, it will try and make up a explanation for it, which is an assumption to better understand why it's happening. And when we do that, we automatically believe it to be true even though it's just an assumption that we made up in our head. We also tend to assume that our partner or people close to us should know what we're thinking. And so we assume that they know what we're thinking and they assume that they know what we're thinking, but that leaves a lot of room for bad communication and it's not super clear. It's not important if our assumption is correct. It's just important that we have an explanation for the assumption. And we'll tend to defend our assumption against others, even if it means breaking up a relationship because we believe in the assumption that we made so much in our mind that we have to defend it from our point of view. We make assumptions because we don't have the courage to ask questions. And we assume everyone sees life the same way that we do. So again, like we talked about in the last chapter, we all have different views. We all have um, different domestication, different books of law, different agreements. But when we're making assumptions, we're assuming that everyone is seeing the world the same way that we're seeing it. We assume that others will reject our true self, so we are not ourself because we assume that they will reject ourself. So they're gonna reject us, so then we're not gonna be who we are because they're already gonna reject us anyway, which leads to self-rejection and fear of being yourself. Uh, we make assumptions about ourselves and create inner conflict. So again, like the last chapter, um, we have these thoughts that go around in our head and we make assumptions to ourselves about things that we don't understand as well. And that creates a lot of inner conflict. We assume people that only, we assume people are only good or bad and that they see things the way that we see. And we we'll see it however we want to see it. We'll also see whatever we want to see. So if we're already looking for something to happen, we'll kind of cause that thing to happen by making certain assumptions um, just because it's what we want to happen. And the way to keep yourself from making assumptions is to, of course, ask questions and in the end, having a life of no assumptions leads to freedom from emotional poison. So if every time you had anxiety about something happening and you immediately went to the worst case scenario, what if instead you just asked a question about what was really happening? Or if you thought you were gonna get in trouble at work when your boss is gonna see you in a week, what if you had a conversation about it and said something and you would gain a lot more freedom because you wouldn't be making assumptions in your head, you wouldn't be assuming the worst, and you wouldn't be giving yourself poison.